football, college football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer, and today we're talking about one of the biggest hires in the college football offseason, and that is Garrett Riley, the former TCU offense coordinator. He is going to Clemson. Um, the Broyles Award winner for the top assistant coach in all of college football will now be the offense coordinator for the Tigers. This is a huge, huge move, and a move that I think Dabo, you know, he knew he had to make it. He knew he had to go out, find an elite offensive mind because, frankly, what they put on the field this past year and especially the year before, just not good enough. Not good enough for this Clemson program and not near good enough to be a national championship caliber team. So, remember last year, Tony Elliott left um, for a head coaching gig. And so, Dabo Sweeney decided to elevate Brandon Streeter, who was already on staff, um, was a guy that he trusted, felt like could keep the offense in a good direction while also having the ability to elevate it, which they needed. They need to get better on the offensive side. Well, he was not very good. He was not very good at all. So that led to this entire situation where Garrett Riley is now coming in to replace him. And I think this is a great move. This is an awesome move for this Clemson program. They're, offensively, it's been inept. 82nd in the country, and then 30th. So that's been their track record the last two seasons. And so they've been heavily relying on their defense, which makes sense. You know, they have a lot of defensive talent. They've been very solid, especially up front on the defensive side. But they really need that high-powered offense to complement it. And over the past two years, they've not been playing complementary football, which is why they've lost three games each of the last two seasons. So now in comes Garrett Riley, who had a lot of success this past year. Just looking at what he did at TCU, um, crazy. The transformation. So obviously, TCU made it to the college football playoff national championship game. Um, they lost to Georgia, did not play well offensively or defensively. They just they got demolished, but that doesn't take away what he did for the entire season. And that is elevating this TCU team that went five and seven the year before to being this kind of program that wins. 13 games. I mean, that is a huge jump in a single season. And even more than that, offensively, they were 66th in the country in 2021. In 2022, this past year, they were ninth. Um, so a huge jump there just by adding Garrett Riley to the fold. And I think for this team in particular, you know, you look at the roster, you look at the guys they have on it, and you see a lot of talent. You do. But I, I think the biggest area to focus on is their quarterback. Cade Klubnik, and this is a guy who was a five-star quarterback. He was uh, the top quarterback in the 2022 class, one of the best prospects in the entire nation, consensusly. Um, very good player. An elite, high-level quarterback prospect that everyone is anticipating to be an NFL player in the near future. But he needs to make a jump. And in order to make a jump, I think this was really important. Um, they needed to make a switch. And they need to bring in a guy who I think can elevate Cade to a level where he can be really, really good. Um, because they can't waste another quarterback like they did with DJU. Uh, DJU was a five-star guy, came in, did not do great, was not developed properly, and is now gone. And so now with Cade, they got to figure out a way to make the most uh, of him. You don't get many guys like this. I know Clemson, you can say, oh, they will, they'll just reload. They'll be able to find another guy, maybe. Uh, but a guy with this level of talent, very hard to find. So specifically with Cade, I, I think this is probably one of the more fascinating areas of this hire as you look at Max Duggan. Max Duggan made a pretty big jump from the 2021 season to 2022. Um, but I think the biggest area was just his processing. And the ability to kind of create plays outside the pocket, but create big plays. Uh, because in 2021, there was a lot of get outside the pocket, then just tuck the ball and run, get outside the pocket, complete a short pass. Um, it wasn't dynamic. Uh, but this past season, it was get outside the pocket, find guys deep downfield, or stand in the pocket and make big, pl big plays downfield as well, as they were the fourth-ranked team in long plays, uh, which is plays over 20 yards. Uh, they were very explosive this year. And that, in large part, is thanks to Garrett Riley and his development of Max Duggan to go along with the offensive weapons that they had. But I think for Cade, that's an important step for him. Uh, getting outside the pocket, finding guys downfield, creating more explosive plays, allowing the run game to be more efficient because you have the ability to take the top off the defense. Um, the other thing that Cade does extremely well is run the football. 
And I think that's going to be something they utilize even more this next year, similar to Max Duggan. Um, and that's something that I think could elevate the offense as well, especially if Riley uses that well, which we have seen he will. Um, so I'm very confident in that. I'm very confident in Kate Klubnick's ability. This is a huge upgrade from Duggan to Klubnick. Make no mistake about it. The talent level is not comparable. Kate is going to be a really good quarterback, and I think Garrett Riley is going to help get him to that point and develop him. Um, on the Cade side of things, I know he wasn't great this year. He wasn't. Like, just just being honest, it was his freshman year. Uh, he was the backup pretty much all year. Um, he had a great game against North Carolina in the ACC championship and then played in the uh, Tennessee game in their bowl game and did not play well. So it's kind of that up and down um, inconsistencies across the board. But I think this is a step in the right direction, right, towards his development. Um, I also think here the run game this year, I think for Clemson was a little confusing. Uh, Will Shipley was their best offense player this year, and they underutilized him uh, to an extent. They also have Phil Moffa, who I like as well, and I think that two-headed monster could be very effective uh, in Garrett Riley's scheme. We saw Kendra Miller be great this past season for TCU. Um, even Emory DeMarcado played really well in a few games this season, including the uh, CFP semifinal game against Michigan. So, I think there's room for two running backs to be successful, but I also think Will Shipley needs to get the football, and Will Shipley needs to be used the way that he should be used, which is as a uh, you know pretty much every down back and get spelled by Phil Moffa, who I also think can be very effective. So very excited there. Their offense line is good enough for this to happen as well. The area to circle, though, and I think this is probably the area that I have, I guess, the biggest question mark with for Clemson's roster and for Garrett Riley. Um, and that's the wide receiver position. So at TCU this year, you got guys like Tay Barber. You got guys like Darius Davis. You got Quentin Johnston, who is a first-round pick by most people in the NFL draft. Um, older guys, right? Guys that were already there, guys that Garrett Riley really didn't have to develop much. It was more so just fitting them in his offensive concept. Um, and now going to Clemson, he's got a much different situation. So the talent is there, right? You look at guys like Antonio Williams, Bo Collins, Adam Randall, um, even Cole Turner. But the first three guys I mentioned were highly rated guys, guys with offers from everybody, four-star, five-star type prospects. But the production hasn't always been there. You saw Bo Collins kind of have a regression type year this season. You saw Antonio Williams have a breakout freshman year. So can he build on that? Maybe, but he's still only a sophomore. Uh, Adam Randall uh, tore his ACL in 2021, came out in 2022, and just was never healthy. Um, so can he get back into form after having a really nice spring in which everyone was thinking he was going to be uh, an elite-level uh, wide receiver for this Clemson team? And then Cole Turner played really well uh, in a couple games this season as, as well. But overall, unproven group. In an area that Garrett Riley is going to have to address immediately, they haven't taken a transfer. Uh, they don't have a high, high-level prospect in the 2023 class. Uh, Noble Johnson is their highest-rated wide receiver in that class. Um, so there's an adjustment there. And there's going to basically have to be guys that take a big step in the right direction. And I'm looking right at Antonio Williams and Bo Collins, those two guys. Another step. Another step forward. If they can do that, that should help their quarterback. That should help their offense a ton. Uh, but that is the area of concern I still have with this Clemson roster. There is uh, no T. Higgins uh, walking through that room. There is no Justin Ross currently. Now, maybe these guys turn into that, but at this moment, that guy is not currently on the roster, or at least we haven't seen the flashes of that quite yet. So that's going to be a big task for Garrett Riley this offseason um, and just Frankly, gain cohesion with those wide receivers and Cade Klubnick is going to be key. But very excited about this hire. I'm anticipating Clemson to make a huge jump next year on the offensive side. And if they do that, if they do what I'm expecting them to do, you should see them in the ACC championship game. You should see them winning the ACC again. And you should see them have an opportunity at making the college football playoff in what should be another weak year uh, for the ACC and possibly a very strong year. Uh, for this Clemson program. So great hire, good job by Dabo, really kind of pivoting away 
from what he did a year ago, going out, finding the best guy for the job, bringing him in, and now allowing him to get to work on the offensive side. So great stuff there by Dabo Sweeney and that entire Clemson program. Very excited for Garrett Riley as well. He deserved this opportunity, definitely earned it over this past season. Uh, That's it for today. I'll have a couple more episodes this week. We'll talk about an NFL draft prospect that I really like and another program uh, that is surging uh, thanks to the transfer portal and thanks to a new coaching hire. But thanks for listening today. This has been Crystal Ball, College Football.